Welcome to the annual DEF CON convention. This meeting was held in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is videotape number 11. Hagen, it's not Radio Guy. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> My email address, uh, you can uh, catch my email address at uh, technopagan at mailcity.com. Thank you. Yeah, that's T-E-C-H-N-O-P-A-G-A-N at mailcity.com. I jumped off the of USA.net because they want money to forward mail. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm finding someplace else to play. Q&A. There we go. Here's a little background about myself and how I started getting into radio and electronics. Let's just use my nose boot. What the heck? I'm going to play with my, uh, my drink bong for opening. There we go. Electronics and radio. God, I hate this laptop. Someone want to like take this out to the DevCon shoot for me and just tell me what happened to it? Take some pictures. Anyway, what got me started, uh, I can give a little bit of background on myself, is um, when I was about four years old, my father handed me a flashlight. I thought that was the most fantastic thing in the world. I could go exploring outside in the dark, and I don't have a cord falling behind me. Nobody could find me. That was really interesting. That's what sparked my interest in getting into electronics. When I was... Uh, uh, in grammar school, my mother came and got me a, uh, a 101 Projects kit at Radio Shack, and that was a beat all end all of everything. You could build neat little things, uh, be creative, um, a lot of satisfaction out of that. Currently, because of that, I, I went to tech school. I'm working in the microsensors industry now. We make very small sensing units. It's really fun stuff. Uh, let's see. Oh, and my disclaimer for this little talk. You can't keep pe uh, stupid people from doing stupid things. And as always, I'm just trying to understand the world around me. Right? That's what information is for. Radio and computers work great together. No doubt about it. For example, I went out to the Pomona Fairgrounds in California, and I needed to pick up some cash from an ATM walk up to the ATM, walk around it. There's only a plug plugged into the ground, and nowhere else do I find any wire. And then I look up, and oh God, what do I see? An antenna sitting on top of the ATM. And it is not a cellular phone antenna. I'm thinking to myself now, who is that talking to? Is there somebody listening to my transaction? Just how secure is this? Well, if you had a scanner, and uh, a couple other small tools, you'd probably be able to sniff that, that traffic just by putting a, a small pole in its way and just reading whatever data comes through it. It wouldn't take long to figure out what carrier frequency it's on, judging by the size of the antenna. That's really cute. So all of you out there in computer land might want to take a trip to radio land because, well, you can uh, read, you know, read the data going by. I'm going to sit down. Oh, let's see, where should I start? The other reason why you'd want to get into radio and, com and combine it with your computer hobby is I'm sure that uh, some of you out there want to send unique information to a small group of your friends and you don't want anybody knowing that the information was sent. Well, if you're sending your, your files over the phone lines, all you need to do is walk up and sniff that with a little, little pickup coil and find out information is going back and, across, back and forth across this line. There's only one place to look, on the phone line. Well, heck, if you're doing that over radio, where do you look? Where do you start? You know, you can't really tell if somebody's actually listening to something. And... Uh, if you're transmitting you know, data back and forth, you can direct the uh, energy from the radio antenna in a very small area. So you're really kind of hard to find if you're, if you're transmitting data back and forth. 
the early advent of uh, computers and, and radio, are, uh, they're connected to a bunch of different things. Satellite links, uh, the global positioning system, that's not really something to hack. It'd be fun to watch the data go by. Paging systems, those are fun. Uh, some of the <laughs> some ATMs that sorted fairgrounds, that'd be interesting to look into. Um, packet radio and the amateur radio bands, I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, that's where two computer systems are hooked up to a box, a little computer and a, a piece of hardware called the terminal node controller. That's where you can send information on the packet radio network, which is worldwide. This, um, this system, uh, you can send oh, letters, pictures, any number of things that you can send digitally. The uniqueness about this is it's kind of slow, but it's extremely robust in the fact that when you send uh, information over packet radio, the sending computer sends out a packet burst and waits for uh, the return to come back that the packet was received okay. And it will keep sending that same packet over and over and over again until it gets, I received that packet, that's good, send another one. So if there's interference or somebody's trying to mess up your signal, the harder the packet radio tries to send that signal through. It's really unique stuff, it's fun. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, the, uh, the amateur radio service is one great way to get familiar with how to hook your, radio, uh, hook your computer in to radio systems. Uh, there's a nationwide, or actually a worldwide group of guys, uh, geeks like us if you were, um, that have uh, technical expertise in sending digital information via radio, how to build radio, how to set up antennas, um, how to disguise antennas, uh, any number of things like that. Oh, there are also, um, I happen to have one with me. What the heck is this? <laughs> this is a child's toy. It originally re retailed for, oh, $90, and now you can pick them up for about 14 at Toys R Us. They've discontinued them. No, these are at 900 megahertz. This thing transmits in the, it's in the amateur radio band, so if you modify this, you can use this thing legitimately. And it sends digital information. There's a digital display on here, there's voicemail in it, a little 20 second voice or digital voice recorder. You know, it just goes on and on and on. Um, let's see. This, this thing won't, won't uh, get all the way across the hotel, but if you had your amateur radio license legally, you can boost that up to uh, anywhere from like a watt to 25 watts and have all of its features. Another person that's going to be speaking, um, I think it was Sunday, something like that, uh, his name's Professor Fiedelbaum. He's going to be doing something on uh, micro, pro micro power broadcasting. And he's set up an entire system in software that you can take those things and use them as a pseudo-cellular system, which is really cool. And it's done with his computer, a, a couple pieces of hardware, and one of those. Uh, let's see. If you were going to start hacking systems, what are the chances of you getting caught doing this? Well, it depends on whether you're transmitting or receiving. If you're just receiving trying to hack information coming your way, there's virtually no way to tell that you're sucking down the information and crunching the numbers out. If you're transmitting, and eh, that's another story, it depends on how much power you're putting out to try to, uh, try to obtain your information, trying to lie to systems and so forth. Not that I would do that anyway. Um, the other thing is, are you standing still or moving while you're transmitting? If you're transmitting and you're moving, you're much, much harder to find uh, if you're trying to send data out, uh, if you're trying to hack a system. Let's see. This can't be all of it. There's got to be more down here. Yes, there are. There's other things you can do legitimately, like phone patches. You don't have to go through cellular networks. Uh, this wouldn't require a computer. It just requires a, a handheld radio and a use of a repeater system that you'd normally subscribe to. However, 
most of the traffic that's sent to repeater systems for phone patches can be, uh, can be hacked out using very, very little test equipment. What I mean by that is, let's say I've got my amateur radio in my hand. <clears throat> There's a machine parked up on the mountain that listens to this particular frequency that I've tuned to. It hears me. It sends out the radio signal at a couple of hundred watts. It extends my range. I wonder if I can get away with this. I'm going to try using this overhead. I wasn't prepared for that, but uh, am I going to get lucky? No. There's no materials underneath here. Rats. Okay. Well, anyway, if you were to use a repeater system, you can get tremendous range, and you can probably send digital information to the repeater system. Another way to send digital information out of the air. The, um, the best way to get that phone patch would be to sit and watch, uh, watch for people using the repeater system and listen to what tones are being sent out. If you can't hear those tones, it's because they're put on a carrier. <coughs> Excuse me. They're being put on a carrier that the humans can't hear, but the machines can. And you can get test equipment that will decipher what tones are being used to trip the repeater and make dial tone come over the air to you. That's uh, be able to make calls, uh, order pizza, uh, all kinds of neat things like that. The cost to wait, let's, 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 let's go up a notch here. Uh, yeah, all right. There's another advantage to um, digital communication. Uh, it's cheap. Getting into radio is rather inexpensive. Pocket scanners that you can use to uh, suck down pager data, um, track the digital stream that's. Um, in one of the bands for the cellular uh, cellular phones, uh, picking up that gear to receive those and to receive those digital signals is really really cheap. Amateur radio gear is also inexpensive. For instance, you can get handheld radios that are used like that for right around one hundred and twenty-five dollars. You can also use those radios. Uh, and plug right into the audio jack itself and start receiving digital information at the proper frequencies. Getting a radio and adding it to your computer is really easy. There are cards that you can load into card slots inside your machine. That way you, uh, you have the radio receiver right in your computer. Those can be picked up in, uh, in amateur radio catalogs. You can shop on the net for those. There are other computer cards that will do deciphering and decoding. One of the um, one of the common decodes. Yes. Oh, it's in the computer. They're bulletproof. They take they take great care to make sure that uh, the higher frequency machines, like three and four hundred megahertz machines, aren't going to hammer the uh, hammer the radio uh, that's on the card that's in the machine. That's easy to protect against. All you have to do is put it in a real nice metal box, solder it all closed, make sure the RF connector is of great quality. Um, after that, it's up to the user to make sure they put the proper coax connector on there and get the, get the antenna as far as the computer is practical. Let's see. Well, yeah, I can think of no better way than to get your amateur radio license. And this is really amazing. When I first heard about being able to go to the FCC and say, I want a license for amateur radio. They promptly said, great, here's all the answers to the questions of the test and the questions. When was the last time any of us walked into a, an institution trying to get some sort of degree, diploma, license, whatever, and the instructor hands you the test with all the questions on it and all the answers? It's easy to get your license. I'm surprised that a lot more people don't have it. 
an example of the hackers and uh, computer enthusiasts that are here today that actually have their amateur ticket and are studying radio. Noid has his, uh, is studying for his license. Evil, Ghost, the man was up here earlier. Fatal, Muntat, Penny Larson are all studying for their amateur radio tickets and it's easy to do. Those questions are available for free. Currently, we have the following people that already have their amateur radio license that are here today. AJ Rez, uh, uh, Professor Fiedelbaum, Enigma, Old Wolf, Bonk, sitting up here in the front row, all of them actually have their amateur ticket. And it took them, um, what, Bonk, maybe a month off and on of studying the questions on your computer. And, yeah, and that was it. And he went down, took his test, paid a whole whopping $3 to the guy for processing fee, and bam, he's now legally able to operate in amateur radio bands, sharpen his radio skills, and add it to his computer skills. So he's no longer limited, he's going to be no longer limited to just hacking the phone line. Now you can hack the airwaves. And congratulations, that was a big push, and you got it. That's great. Uh, let's see. Heck, I already covered that license. Getting your license is easy. Um, there are a bunch of places to look for more info to help you link your computer to radio. The Amateur Radio Relay League is one of them. That would be A -L -L -R A -R -R -L, Alpha Romeo Romeo Lima dot org. And the, the, the prefix applies to www dot show you know, dot um, there's also other publications you can find in the magazine rack. Popular Communications is one of them. And there's also quite a bit about just scanning the police bands uh, with, a, with a pocket scanner. And there are a lot more things to listen to than just the police band. When you go down to Radio Shack, I want to buy a scanner, sure. And they sell it to you and most people I just end up listening to the cops in the 400 megahertz band. Well, I've got news. There's all kinds of interesting things out there, up to including cordless telephones, toys. There's a, uh, a digital toy pager called Page a Friend or something like that. You can get it at Toys R Us. That's a, got a digital circuit and an RF circuit linked together in it. They're selling this stuff to kids, you know, this, this one toy. Um, RF, uh, radio frequency, and uh, digital hardware are just inseparable. Um, Understanding it, knowing it, and exploiting it can be rather entertaining, especially if you just want to go driving around if you don't want to get found. Hook up the antenna, hook up the computer, hook up your cell phone. Um, radio is just, just so much, uh, so flexible. Yes? Oh, uh, this film is referring to how do you get a hold of a of a radio scanner, a pocket scanner, that will receive the entire band. Well, there's a couple of ways around this. People didn't want their phone call. Well, let, me, let me back up a little bit and how come the holes got there. Somebody whined and complained to the cellular company saying, hey, people are listening to my conversations. Okay, right. Well, uh, get rid of the radios that will receive those frequencies and legislate it out a certain band of frequencies in your, in your scanner. So your freedom to see what's going on in the airwaves has been impinged. They deleted the cellular band out of the scanners. Well, there's a way around that. That's called a down converter. You won't be able to buy that scanner that you want that's continuous, that'll sweep the entire band. So what you do to get around that is you can buy a converter. They're still legal, they always will be. What this does is it's a radio receiving front end that sucks up the cellular information coming out over the airwaves, chops its radio, radio frequency in half, let's say, and now, instead of that 896 megahertz signal coming through into your scanner and out your speaker, the converter box has taken it from 900 megahertz down to 400 megahertz, goes into your scanner, and now the information comes out your speaker. So there's a workaround for that. You know, legislating this out was, you know, absolutely toothless. Yes? How large is this? Yeah, you can, you can get them uh, as portable as you like. They go right with your base station or handheld scanner. 
and they're inexpensive. It's just one more thing you gotta buy because somebody wanted to whine and complain that uh, their, their conversations are being listened, listened to. Here's okay. Just get, to get rid of the skip instruction, the engineers found out that that legislation was coming along, so they decided to, okay, well, we'll modify the scanners, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, that, you know, it'll make the lawmakers happy and it won't curtail sales. The Pro 2006 scanner, which is no longer made or sold from Radio Shack, had a modification. All you needed to do was open the top cover up, get out a pair of wire cutters, cut one component called a diode, slap it back together, poof, no legislation interference. Your cellular came back. Now it's not so easy. They're, they're making the engineers, you know, the wily guys that realized what was going on and thumb their nose at the legislation, have now been forced into, a, or later been forced into a corner by doing all that non-modification stuff in the ASIC or the, the software, the firmware, the machine. There's nothing you can do about it presently. Early on, you could just mod the scanner back to original operating condition. Well, what they did was, at first it was hardware modifications, and then the engineers tried it again. They said, okay, there's no more hardware modifications, and all you had to do was hold a couple of keys down on some of the scanners, power it on, and poof, here comes the cellular reception again, thumbing their nose at legislation once again. But the legislators have finally gotten wise and decided that, no, you guys aren't going to make that sort of thing anymore in for sale in the United States. You can buy that stuff over the net in the UK or something like that, and they'll say it's not for import or something like that. And get your, yeah, they'll ship to Jamaica or Japan or some crap like that. Jump on a plane, make yourself some money, go get a PO box somewhere and start, start, what, running radios across the border or something if you want to get around it, you know. Well, there we go, there's a hole, there's another hole in the system, and, and you know what, yeah. There we go. That works too. No, the uh, the 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 problem that I personally have with somebody trying to legislate, don't listen to this. All this whiny, pissy, money crap is. Hey, you're broadcasting. You're on an analog channel on your cell phone. Tough. You are broadcasting, you've got a radio in your hand, a two-way device. Just because somebody slaps a label on it and says phone, doesn't mean that you're on a phone, you're on a radio. You're broadcasting. You know, it's like, get over it, don't say anything you wouldn't say if you weren't at home. Yeah, you got a hard wire at home, you're not broadcasting, yeah. Somebody listening to that, that's not nice. No, I expect privacy there, but there's no reasonable expectation of privacy in my book when you are broadcasting on a cellular phone and therefore I don't mind my saying go ahead and listen it's not legal but do it anyway because who in the hell is going to catch you you're receiving damn it schmucks anyway I shouldn't be ranting about my personal political beliefs about being able to monitor cellular conversations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This gentleman, what this gentleman is referring to is some of these scanners that have been cell blocked are so bad in what they'll choose to listen to and choose not to listen to that you can tune above or below a certain spot in the, in the cellular band and hear it anyway. And there's not much that anybody can complain about that. So that's, that's you know, an, a kind of a flaw in the engineering. I, wonder, I wouldn't wonder if somebody actually designed things that way. Yes. 
encrypting your own transmissions? Glad you asked. <laughs> I was talking to the professor about this the other day in preparation for my talk, and he had mentioned something about Baudo, which is a five-digit uh, five binary uh, code to send things out, like ASCII's, what, eight bits? Right, forgive me if I'm not real up in the computer aspect of everything. My business is dealing with hardware, dealing with the soldering iron end of things as far as software goes and keeping track. Not too good at it. As far as encrypting goes, like this gentleman mentioned, yeah, it's pretty easy and pretty, um, pretty, pretty simple to get away with saying, oh, I didn't realize I was sending an encrypted transmission. Especially when you're sending a lot of packets in the clear, and then all of a sudden you send a couple of garbage packets that happen to be encrypted that have the zip, you know, PK zip stuck in there along with your BAUDO, and now your computer that's monitoring radio traffic is just going to look at that as trash. And there's lots of trash being sent anyway. So yeah, you can you can encrypt, but just make sure that less than half of what you're sending is encrypted. That way you don't end up raising an eyebrow. Oh, he's just got a tr crappy transmitter, or the software in his computer isn't like really up to par, and it's not sending the data like it should, and so forth. So yeah, you can send encrypted information. There's been rumors that people have been sending um, sending really not so legal things over packet radio pictures. I guess you can use your imagination while that's going on. Yes? Right. You're not supposed to, the FCC in a nutshell says that you're not supposed to be encrypting stuff. Well, tough. Shut that down. That's, you know, it's, it's like legislating, everybody's got to wear black shoes. That's going to happen. Yeah, okay. This gentleman over here, 2600 shirt. Right, the down convert is what he's asking about. Yeah, I would imagine that you can get up converters, but down converters are um, more conducive because what you're trying to do is take a higher frequency, receive it, and then convert it down to something that's easier to deal with. The lower frequencies are easier to deal with than higher ones. Higher frequencies you have to deal with um, cleanliness of the circuit when you really get up there, um, you know, actually physically clean, getting all the flux and other materials out of it. The, uh, the space, um, design considerations, how close together you can get things, how short wires have to be, that sort of thing. But yeah, down converters are most common. They're, they're fairly cheap. Yes? Tempest. That's an interesting thing. If you want a Tempest shield, break out the aluminum foil. That's it. Break out the aluminum foil, get yourself what's called snap-on RFI chokes. It's two pieces of powdered iron in a block. Well, it's shaped like a C, and then there's two pieces of, or one piece of plastic that's hinged that goes around it, goes around the, uh, the two pieces of powdered iron, and wrap your computer cords and things in those four or five times. They're cheap. They're $15 for four of them at Ham Radio Outlet in Anaheim, California. But that's, you can get those anywhere. It's just, I just thought I'd throw that reference out there so you'd, so you'd have some place to start. Um, as far as Tempest shielding, shielding goes, it's easier to shield than receive. I've been there. Building sensitive, selective amplifiers is a little bit tricky. There are some off-the-shelf things that you can modify. I've had articles. In fact, I wonder, I've probably got some Tempest data in here. Let me exit out of this and see what I can find. Run, go ahead and stand up and run that button one more time because I barely, barely hear you. Right, I remember seeing something like that on the net and there's also a... Right, there's also a defeat for that and it's how you do your pixels. 
it's, um, it's kind of like, have you ever taken your paycheck and photocopied it and all of a sudden it says copy or avoid or something like that on the, on the copy that comes out of the machine, but you look at it and go, every one of these little blue dots in the background is blue. But all of a sudden you look at the thing real close and you find out that the, uh, I don't know what you call it, the uh, copy has got the word void in there. Well, you can alter the pixels on your computer screen so when somebody tries to read your information remotely, the pixels don't make that much of a difference in the noise they put out that the, the, the person attacking you is trying to receive. So when they, when they point their antenna around to your terminal and want to read it, you've got pixels in there that are, that are making almost the same radio signature, but they're making a different picture signature. So what they're going to look at is some weird thing, and you've got your screen. Like, they'll get zebra stripes, and you'll get your page of text clear, and they won't. It's, uh, that's one way of defeating against Tempest, um, short of shielding your, your monitor. Um, Oh jeez, I jumped out of that. That was not good. Weird Let's go. There we go. Put that. Yes. You know that just defeating the defeating If you go looking around in the net for Tempest and just keep at it day day in day out and start to throw out the sites that are junky. Um, gosh, there's a there's a site that's in Holland that is, and the name is real short and it escapes me. If you, I'll be available on email to answer answer that question, but God, what the heck name is it? Shoot, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna dump the notes and I'm gonna I'm gonna look for that. Because I know it's a it's a Holland site and it's just on the tip of my tongue that's driving me nuts trying to figure this out. Uh, yes. Okay, I know what a spectrum analyzer is, but could you explain what? Oh, I see what you mean. You can make it go through. Yeah, there are cards that will go buzzing through the radio spectrum and give you a signal report as to what's been where. So you can have your computer system log the radio spectrum in your, in your local area and start having it isolate and skip over bands of frequency like the FM broadcast band. There's, there's 22 megahertz of stuff you don't need. It'll drop it, it'll skip right over that and skip over the television band. Uh, and it'll start looking for stuff that hardly ever gets used. And you know, just, just to stop on scanning for a little bit, the stuff that's hardly ever used is the most interesting stuff of all. All kinds of obscure transmissions go by once a month, twice a month. But if your scanner is still looking for that, you know, going over the real quiet stuff, you'll find some pretty interesting things. You yes? You don't want to have to blow the entire television band away because a lot of uh, those surveillance cameras use the... Uh, right, yeah, they get, they get into the band, the... the UHF channels. Right, yeah, there, there's no part of the radio spectrum that's sacred to anyone that wants to do something unique. Um, I've often had thoughts of um, uh, having an encryption scheme using the local radio station as a key. You add the local radio station KFI with your transmitted signal on your CB radio. Well, if you combine the two, it comes out trash. But if you use the KFI radio receive signal on the other end to subtract it, your, vo your buddy's voice comes out nice and clear, and you can obscure things that way. That was done in 1980 when I was in high school, <laughs> going to electronics class. I'm like, I got to figure out how to be quiet on this thing, because I want to tell people things that I don't want other people to hear. So that was, that was pretty fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find that, find that site because there are, there's a bunch of things there. They've got uh, stuff on herfing and a whole bunch of other things. So, yeah. Um, yeah. 
some noise in the background and this is before yeah that makes that makes for um, you know makes a uh, an intelligence gatherer life just a nightmare trying to pull stuff like that down um, a friend of mine thought that um, the feds were trying to do things um, so he you know, every time he'd invite a friend over he'd just turn the bass up really really loud and he thought they were trying to bounce off his window. They were trying to laser bounce. So he just decided to scatter the signal. If you can't collect it, you, know, you hit a bass note, it's going to deflect the laser beams to the point where they won't be able to collect it. They dance around all over the place. They'll never find it. So he, he decided to start doing that. And apparently, my Tempest files are not in here. Uh, going over radio and the amateur radio band, there's this a speed limit. I think it's 14.4. I'm not sure. I th I'm, it's it's going to be higher than that. It's a lot higher. Go to the upper side. The two time amateur radio thing. There are packed people there. Do you have. Tapper.org. TAP. Hmm. Okay. There's, there's a... So you can also find you can also find aid in getting tested on uh, the ARRL site. You just look. You just go to on the ARRL site. You'll find it under uh, test or licenses or some such thing. Got a question in the back? Have I played with Pulse Radio? No, I have not. to have that information. Is, is that like burst transmissions, as someone asks? cell phone to go into like a test or a maintenance mode or something like that and go scanning through the scanning through the band. What's that now? 
Well, you just well, the, having an amateur radio license affords you the liberty of checking for interference only, which means you can own and actively scan through and momentarily listen to for the duration of checking for checking for interference. You can listen to the cellular band if you want to. So if you just exploit that a little bit, which I don't recommend, but yes. Two-way paging is okay. Um, well, as, well, let me back up a little bit here. As far as I know, you bending your ear to a paging frequency and listening to it is of no consequence. There's no problem there. The moment you start actively building up circuits and designing software to go after PogSag, Dole, Flex, Format, which are all publicly available on the net, I might, have, I might add. Um, you can find, if you just type in PogSag or Flex Format into a search engine, chances are you'll find, you know, and you dig around a little bit, you'll find the schematics, find the software to suck up paging information in your local area. My favorite is going after the prostitutes and busting them, that's fun. It takes a little while. You have to figure out what service they're subscribing to, and after you've done that, then you go through the, uh, the phone numbers for that block, have your software start looking for the message you just sent out, you've got her. So you can just roll her over, <laughs> beat cell phone hacking. Right. It's not your broadcasting. So when you send a page in flex format or PogSag, Gole, whatever you whatever you like, you're broadcasting. So don't say I've got the 14 million dollars. Where's my 15 billion pounds of cocaine? Don't do that. <laughs> it sends all kinds of information like your uh, the signature, uh, the signature numbers, and so forth. I don't know the exact terms. What do they call that? I guess it's just the pager's address number. You now it's what six, eight digits long or something like that. And if the FBI if really wants to get into it, they can find you if they felt like it. So, no broadcasting. Yes? Is it like speaking, is it difficult to transmit out the data to this particular No. But, you, but the, but the problem with that is you have to get, you have to send your page when the other paging signal is not currently on the air, and that's like five seconds, ten seconds, one second. You have to know when to click on your transmitter and send the burst. See, because they'll be stepped on, because these, I've been to these paging sites and tops of the hotels in Los Angeles, and there are these nice big 19-inch rack mount things and these big thick wires coming out with lots of power. And they're all synchronized. The, the transmissions are synchronized. So you get coverage all at once in the LA Basin, or it comes off a satellite with repeating systems all here at all at the same time. So it's, yeah, that's like... Yeah, so you've got to be able to step right into the middle when the radio transmitter shuts off, then you turn yours on and then get out of there and let the rest of the traffic go by. That's the other thing the FCC gets real pissy about is the two things, public safety and big money commerce. Big money commerce means you're with the paging frequencies because there's cash going by there. And if I owned a multi-million dollar business like a paging you know, paging net, I'd be rather upset if somebody was interfering with my frequency and go complain to the FCC and they'll rain terror on you. No problem. That and the other public safety stuff. All right, that was the other thing. If anybody wants to hack the public safety systems, please don't. There's plenty of people out there that need those services. If you want to hack something, has to hack the trash trucks or the taxi cabs or something. Don't hack the, the safety systems. <laughs> yeah, don't don't go doing things like that either. That's not a cool thing. Yes. I don't have the information on that. For the past like three or four months, I have been playing with a motorhome that got us here. <laughs> um, plug plug for shadowco.org because the pictures of that thing are on that on that site. So. Oh, yeah, I may as well. Um, 
I used to and soon will have another web page on shadowcode.org. As if poor old wolf's machine isn't going to get hit for all the uh, Windows information that Mojo is going to put up there. He's going to have a heck of a time getting when he gets when he gets back. Uh, the old old wolf is just going to be sitting in front of his box. He's, I can find him now. He'll be he'll be administering his machine for uh, return all the returns on uh, information from uh, from the talk Mojo gave. To, to, to seize, a, seize a network in the area? you got to figure out how to lie to the machine, which means you're going to have to do a lot of listening. You have to do a little bit of research. I, I can't see why you'd want to be able to control the network. Have you got something in mind? or? Oh, sending your own signals through it. Um, that would be a very unique exploit. Using the existing radio systems to purvey your own madness. That would I would really be interested in hearing what your what your thoughts are on that. Do email me with all the particulars. We'll send some send some block diagrams back and forth or something and at least do this in theory. Because most, most of the exploits and things that I think of are just like you know, an interesting chess match. Can you really do this? Is it really doable? Okay, it is. Great. Well, do I really want to do this? Nah, I got something else to do. But just the, just the mental exercise of, finally, can you send your own digital traffic through the cellular system? Yeah, being able to... Now, getting, being the man in the middle of a microwave system is really unique, and it does require a little bit of research. You've got to have your pole and stick it up into the stream and sniff it and find out what's going by here, what's on this thing. You know, that's just taking a look at the world around you and trying to understand it. Now, getting back to what I had said earlier about going to the Pomona Fairgrounds and sticking your pole up at the front of the ATM is kind of obvious what you're doing. It's like, yeah, but that's nothing that a clipboard, an orange vest, and a hard hat can't cure. <laughs> so, you know, if people believe you're supposed to be there, you believe that you're supposed to be there. So, yeah. But that, like I said, most of the things that I think of are, can it really be done? And from the left, I would say, yeah, it would be believable if you run fast little stripes and clipboard and ramble off some tech speak and even some security guard go, hey, can you keep people away from this thing for a little while? Just switch it all around on them, you know, just the security guard's there to ask you what to do. You're telling him what to do because you need to get your job done. He's going to go, oh, okay. You're legitimate. You're asking me to do things. Instead of defending yourself, you're just employing me, so... There's the man that's going to load up shadowcode.org, no doubt. <laughs> uh, let's see, any other questions? I'm about out of time. And I'm going to find out who's speaking next. Think of something else for me to answer a question about. <laughs> okay. Right. Oh, you mean crystals? Yeah. I don't know where you're from, but there are swap meets, and I'll plug one that I frequent once a month. Uh, what is it? The last Saturday of every month, at the company called TRW, and it's got nothing to do with credit checking and stuff. They're actually building things there. Um, the TRW swap meet last Friday of every month near Rosecrans and Aviation Avenue. No, in Southern California. See, like, I know most people are not from Southern California. You guys are from all over the freaking planet. So it's, um, it's in... Uh, Torrance, I believe. But look for Rosecrans and Aviation Boulevard, and that'll tell you what's going on. It's kind of near the 405 freeway. 
And there is all kinds of computer gear and amateur radio gear there. No clothing, no other like furniture and stuff like that for sale, just radio gear and hard electronics and so forth. And you find all kinds of unique, obscure things that say Department of Navy on them. Weird boxes that are just so heavy, you go, my god, what's in here type of thing. So. You never know what's going to show up. Really, out here, if out here, I have seen so many unique boxes that have been declassified in like under 20 years that are out there. It's like, the uh, heck, you know, somebody. There's, yeah, there's all kinds of radio gear to be had for that. That was the other thing in uh, my talk is about radio gear and how cheap it is to get. All you have to do is look. Um, unfortunately, he's from a territory that you say is like an underground. You've got to keep it kind of kind of quiet. But there's actually radio gear that, yeah. Well, heck, we've got a nice little metropolitan area out here. Los Angeles is in our backyard for Torrance and the Orange County area and so forth. But there's tons of gear. There's a swap meet at Golden West. There's, you know, it's the general type swap meet. But there's still tons of radio gear out there. All kinds of things. I picked up a telephone test set that you had to load 22 volt, 22 and a half volt batteries into. And 9 volt batteries that were round that looked like C batteries that had the one 9 volt connector on one side and the other, the other 9 volt connector on the other, you know, the, the little, little rings. Weird stuff out there. So all you have to do is just walk around take a look. Um, there's plenty of things to experiment with, to hook your computers in. Um, searching on the, on the net is one way of getting a hold of stuff. You can you can email me, email me at technopagan at Mail City and I'll see what I can find. Um, the Tempest thing rather interests me, both send and receive, uh, because that's all about radio. And can I really do this? There was an there was an article in a back issue of 2600 that covered Tempest and how they were wandering around New York City and watching everything going on that was sensitive. I mean, just the general population office type stuff. They went down Wall Street, they went down a few other places, they stopped in front of an ATM and picked a few things up. It's just, it's just frightening how loose everything is via radio. You know, if, you, if things are loose via telephone, how much looser, you know, the telephone wire, how much looser is radio? No, radio is all over the damn place. Um, all you have to do is listen. Now, the skip the transmitting stuff, just tuning in with the world around you is just a, an amazing thing. Um, how am I doing on time here? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, it does not take much to convert, it, yeah, it, it does not take much to convert an old stand-up video game into an ATM. You've got a nice screen there, so what if it's too big? You know, it, particle board's heavy, you can make it look, you put some sheet metal on the outside, looks like wood, tastes like wood, looks like an ATM to me. Um, you know, there are all kinds of crazy stories like that, people wanting to get caught doing that. The ones that don't get caught and you don't get, you know, you don't hear of, is just frightening. You know, this is a mad, crazy place with all this silicon and radio waves flying around, and it's best to understand it and get on the good side of it rather than being, you know, being left in the dark. I think my time's up, and I don't see anybody in the on deck circle up here. Well, thank you very much for me winging it. Remember, I mentioned that. that uh